when you can't leave it down like that. So, unfortunately, that's the end of the game for this bike. It's not going anywhere. So now I should put this bike back together again and go and make another one. And buy another frame. To put all this in. Now, having said all that, I'm now looking at the road clearance and I'm looking at this gap. I'm thinking to myself, where is the hard fast rule that that name, book pad, on there must be level? Because I've got a lot of road clearance there. The levels of them are unchanged. Everything else is unchanged. And even if that was round straight, the wires would be more vulnerable than anything else because they would be at the bottom. Do you know, I don't think this makes a blind bit of difference. So, I'm going to go for it. Now remember, at this point, I still have the option of putting this bike back together again, selling it and buying something that's ideally shaped for it. But this is such a beautiful bike. It's been built like a tank. And it's gone through 20 years of work and not showing a sign of it. Therefore, it's the best bike to put it on, if I can. The suspensions and everything is just so superior to a standard bike that you get. Which is why I wanted to electrify this one. And not just go buy another one that was perfect and easy. So, to me, it's worth the risk. The battery is going to be a challenge because of this shape. I will have to make a bracket to take the battery. I was going to put it here, but it's giving me about 20 mil clearance with the wheel and it's from suspension. It's going to hit it. Um, so I can't do that. <clears throat> so it's going to go there. There's lots of obstacles that I wouldn't have if I had a standard bike and you probably won't have if you're doing your bike because they're not built like this. Um, you want a flat top bar where your wall ball goes, or a, a bigger clearance here where your wall ball goes, or inside. So, let's make a start. That is going to go there. Let's work out where these wires go and decide how I want them to feed first, I think, and then we can start getting this clamped in place. At least it's got a good solid stop. It can't go any further. Because that is really a solid piece of steel there. So, let's get that fastened into place. Teeth on this one to face inwards. That one's going to there. That fits on there nicely. We have two big bolts. That's these. Yes, better. Better. Goodness of it. Yeah, a little bit more. Well, not. Right, okay. That's solid. That is. No movement. Okay, good. Right, now this goes over the top of that. The direction of it. Locking nut. I believe we need a bit of um, locking nut there for that. So let's put a bit of locking. Okay, next on this side, we want to put this the, the toothed cog on there. Now on this one, I got a 42 toothed cog, even though 
the book says for a 26 inch wheel you're supposed to have the 48 I measured no I didn't measure I counted mine and it was 42 T so I presume the manufacturers of the bike knew best sorry at the same time and it turned out to be exactly the same dimensions which means the ratio between this and that is the same as it always was with the big cog I've got the engine to give me the power to go build so I don't have the small cogs, I don't need them but I need the speed fingers and then this one just make sure you get it I'll put it to that one it won't be rather funny when you ride it now wind it in Nice new pedals on. That's right. That's this one. Yeah. Okay, chains on, so I guess you could say that's a milestone. We've actually got the new pedal system running. The battery on. <laughs> okay, it's good. Right, next thing I want to do is start working out where the wires are going to go, how they're going to route to keep them safe and well where, where away from everything. I can use the old one for the upper change, which is up here, for the changer that was here, because um, it's empty, it's clear. So I could tie them to that. Um, the battery is going to be up here, so just two wires up down from that, from the battery. As for the wiring, there is no, well there's no instructions with this thing at all, anyway. So, last night I went online, and I got some photos of the wiring. That's it. Okay, so here I've got all the wires of everything, and um, that's the speed controller. This is a harness. It should connect and run forward. And it also, yeah, also adds in there the magnet for the speed sensors. So this should fit into one of these. That one. Yep, yeah, that fits into there. Two hours. Done. Right. Now this takes all the sensors from the front. So it goes up to the front there. So this one needs to travel all the way forward. Up there, up there, up there, into the control point where we have there then um, two yellow, which will be uh, the brake sensors. Probably then. They just change their colours. <laughs> They're nice people. <laughs> Change the colour coding systems on you. Yeah, why not? Right, let me just try to see if they fit. Yeah, they look the right size. Three pins, yeah, they're correct. They're working. Then we've got this one and this one. Um, let's start. That one will be for the accelerator. And it's got an hour, so that helps. And this is the controller, which I'll assume, yeah, green. There we are, the green that goes into there. And there's there, there. So that's everything up there. That's that done. Now, this, I got a clue. What else is to be connected? They're connected. 
This is an extension power cable. So yes, they are power cables. There's your extension power cable. This is for lights. So that is for your speed sensor. John, because this goes on, on this side to the back wheel. Somewhere around there. Then I've got this left. Now this is for the gear sh shift sensor, which I'm going to add. So that will go up it. So the only thing we haven't got done is the lights, which is still in my planning mode in my head. I haven't decided exactly what to do on that. I want lights, but I don't know what yet. Or whether I'm going to have rechargeable ones, or ones that's going to drain power from these batteries. Because at the end of the day, using lights at night time, you're going to get less distance. If you've got rechargeable ones, and they run out, I can plug them into it, I think. It's got USB. I've got USB on this, I've got USB on the battery. That will seem straightforward, reasonably. Now I'm going to start playing with my wires, just to get them so I know where I want them to be. I want them roughly to run up underneath here, where this cable used to be, because it's a correct place for a cable, and it'll look like it's normal. 